If you love football, this story might make you think twice about the implications of the love of the game. Now, we're talking about that we're in week three of the current NFL season. Everybody's excited, the fans, the broadcasters are pumped up because they have a new day to broadcast the game, making more money. But at the center of these sports, we have the players. The players that are at risk of suffering severe concussions in any game. And now we have a research conducted by the Department of Veteran Affairs and Boston University. And what they did, Nick, it's very impressive. They look into 91 brains of former NFL players that when they died, decided to donate their brains to science because they shown symptoms of this disease called CTE. Basically, CTE is chronic um, uh, hitting of the hitting head. Of the head. Yeah. Many, many, many hits of the head. They accumulate and they create this disease that some of the symptoms is headaches, migraine, depression, substance abuse, uh, confusion. and. What they found is very, very scary. From the 91 samples, 91 different NFL players, 87 tested positive for the disease. Now, we have to understand that this disease is very particular because it cannot be diagnosed when the patient is alive. They actually have to diagnose it after the fact, oh. after you're dead. You so physically have to have that is the loophole that NFL has been using to not disclose how much knowledge they actually have about this issue among their players. Now, it's well known that the NFL has already settled a, one of the biggest, biggest lawsuits that have been in this arena. Right, that lawsuit actually they paid out in 2013, just a few years ago, they paid $765 million to more than 18,000 players. That is a whole lot of money. And you know, I don't follow football per se, I, I'm a soccer fan, and I know that in soccer recently, I mean, they started talking about you know head injuries that occur just from soccer, and, that, and that's way less of a physical sport than football is. I mean, now there's different rules in soccer where if you get hit in the head, it used to be that some guy would come with a flash, I'd be like, okay, he's good, get back to the game, but now you actually have to physically get off the field, someone has to look at you. and. The reason I'm mentioning soccer here when we're clearly talking about another kind of football is because I think this fi these findings will have huge implications for all sorts of physical sports, uh, be it contact sports, contact in sports yeah. like 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 uh, rugby. I, I think one of, of them, rugby, hockey, boxing as well. So I think this is huge, and I, I that's really messed up that certain people want to keep this under wraps for their own damn reasons, completely disregarding the people that are actually making you that money and their own health. That's for me the worst part of all. Yeah, of and many will feel that, you know, these guys are millionaires, they're getting a lot of money paid, that the cost of getting your brain smashed, so, you know, sell a bit. But the reality is that this new study uh, was published by PBS Frontline, was wrapped around a lot of controversy because NFL pushed really, really hard for ESPN to stop supporting the investigation behind this journalist work. Uh, it's sad to see that the NFL has been pushing in one hand, they claim that they're doing a lot to help the players, to educate the players, but something that is very telling is the fact that we've seen these rookies coming into the NFL with humongous contracts mm -hmm. and deciding to walk away from millions upon millions of dollars after a year, six months of playing the game. Because if you base the results, if you, you base the results that we had in this investigation, the sample, it was 89% uh, of people that were sampled that actually were diagnosed for this disease. So if you extrapolate that, and this is all speculation, you're talking about a very high percentage of players that might show this disease when they're dead. And for many of them, it's completely debilitating. They can't perform later. They, a lot of them end up with terrible lives after the game because they don't know what's happening. They don't know that they actually have a disease that they acquire by hitting themselves. And before it was believed that it was the accumulation of really big concussions that actually created the disease, but the newest research says that a lot of tiny ones are actually more dangerous than three or four big, big plays. So the danger is that we see in this country how football is the American sport, and we have kids five years old already playing and being pushed to play at a level to you know, to really shine, physical, to yeah. become stars, to become professional, is no different than the Roman Coliseum, where we just go and we see these people kill each other, right. little by little, for our, own, for our own, own enjoyment. And you know, I'm a fan of sports, I love contact sports, I love football, but you have to be real, and you have to understand that these people is putting their life at risk for our entertainment, and yes, they get paid millions, but how much is your brain worth? I want to know, let us know in the comments below, how do you feel, and please, if you haven't subscribed to the Lib TV too.